Giza is a literal treasure trove once lost to antiquity. Due to the sheer enormity of the Great Pyramid and its two slightly smaller neighbors, it's undoubtedly the greatest ancient wonder anywhere on Earth. A smorgasbord of mysteries drenches the plateau and beyond. Throughout Egypt, incredibly intricate, accurately carved, enormous stone megaliths and surviving temples can be found. The Great Pyramid of Cheops, which contains the claimed sarcophagus of Khufu, which would not have fitted into the structure, this regardless of how they created such enormous yet astoundingly plumb structures, set over such a large area of space and indeed with the weight of the stones used. The global alignments to these monuments also match the known speed of light. The depth of the mysteries of ancient Egypt we have only but scratched the surface of. We do not know how the pyramids were built, and we are no closer to an explanation which is logical for why they were constructed, regardless of the illogical rubbish taught today, than when rediscovered. One said mystery is yet another curiosity surrounding water. The other, namely the water controversy of the erosion of the Sphinx. The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure undoubtedly show that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates Robert Scotch argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock propose that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier in around 36,000 BC, a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. We fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. It pertains to a dusting of curious drainage systems found built into, or rather just below, original temple structures. The peculiar thing regarding the enigmatic flow chambers is not only their tiny size, as if harvesting rather than to be used for ancient drainage of precipitation. However, if indeed proven for the removal of rainwater, it would defend additional alternative historical theories regarding the posit of how the Sphinx lost its nose to rain. This pushes its date of construction, however, into an era not acceptable within modern paradigm. What were these curious channels? What were they constructed for? The channels focused upon in this video can be found protruding from beneath the north side of the Sphinx Temple. These enigmatic channels have been studied and examined by a number of Egyptologists and enthusiasts alike. The diagrams created showing inner designs of these mysterious features have shed no light on their original purpose, as if one did indeed simply perceive them as drainage systems, they are practically far too small in diameter. Additionally, this channel in particular actually angles inwards toward the temple itself, as if the creators were instead feeding fluid into the temple itself. The mystery remains unsolved. Yet regardless, we find these anomalous channels highly compelling. We have as a species long suffered the results of a civilization with foundations for understandings built upon outdated belief systems, and a funded academic institution in which one is rewarded for repetition rather than that of pioneering a theory which could shine a light upon the oldest, most controversial corners of human civilization. Where did we come from? How old is human civilization? 
These are questions which we have not only witnessed being ignored by the majority of mainstream academia, but have also shown, through what we believe is overwhelming evidence to prove that this same entity, entrusted with the accurate account of human history, has not only concealed a reality which threatens many mainstream belief systems, but also the modern attested theory of evolution as a whole. Entire chapters of human history, and also, more than likely, entire branch of subspecies of giant humanoid remains removed from the history books, concealed within kilometers of hidden artifacts, hidden away, withheld from the masses, often in favor of profitable avenues, born out of stability of understandings which powerful institutions grown out of which, in turn, protect their own survival rather than that of the allowance of furthering the understandings of the common man. There is not only strong evidence still to be found all over the planet of past, highly advanced civilizations which displayed capabilities far beyond that of any civilization within the permitted timelines of investigations, but prove the tremendous age of some of these ancient ruins. These relics far from mere ruins, are in reality more accurately described as the fossilized remains of human activities that do not just stretch a few hundred thousand years into the ancient past, but due to the time needed to develop such features, are indicative of a civilization nearly or possibly over a million years in age. The great stones within the western wall, for example are not only far in excess of any weights the already studied permitted ancient ancestors within known history were capable of moving, or indeed using as building blocks, but fortunately this site still possesses ancient wooden stakes, presumably once used within the method of construction, which regardless of the fact that the method is still an enigma to modern understandings, the wood, in contrast to stone relics, can indicate an age as to when this foundation was undertaken, petrified, fossilized, now stone blocks of what was once wood, that are unquestionably of an incredible age, support our argument of this far-spanning, currently dismissed chapter of ancient human civilization, which, if embraced by mainstream science, would not only prove this past beyond doubt, but would in turn threaten many currently highly profitable and as such extremely powerful and in turn influential belief systems and the institutions which have grown up around them in regards to ancient human origins and development. Fossilized tree roots can also be found upon the megalithic blocks of Gornea Shoria. Many other sites, like that of the inexplicable ancient temples of Petra, in some of the less publicized areas of the site, display immense erosion regardless of the site's relatively sheltered location. It seems that many of these oldest of sites not only often lay below several feet of sediment, which due to the funded and as such same rhetoric within geological studies forbids said sites to even be recognized as that of the past work of intelligent man. Due to this immense age, any human remains that may have been left by these ancient builders would have long turned to dust or have been fossilized at the site. Concealed upon their discovery, or like any site which gains notoriety within mainstream media, secretly revisited and ransacked of any evidence of this incredible age. We believe that possibly the only remaining traces of these past ancestors can now only be found within the most obscure and curious of places, like that of the Altamura Man, for example. A rare fossil, apparently of the genus Homo, discovered in 1993 in the karst sinkhole in the Lama Lunga cave near the city of Altamura within Italy, that thanks to its location and the near impossible feat it would be to remove him, has been left in situ for the world to see and thanks to where he fortunately lay, has been slowly growing ever since his death. He is quite possibly of an immense age, and died an incredibly long time ago. 
and has, instead of slowly decaying away, fading away like the world which he once lived within, has continued to be preserved in the calcite that has grown around him. Remarkably well-preserved but embedded in stalagmites and covered in a thick layer of calcite, the fine was left in situ in order to avoid damage. Research during the following 20 years has been based mainly upon documented on-site observations. Consequently, experts have conveniently remained reluctant to agree on a conclusive age, and have thus never arrived at a mainstream consensus on the species it belonged to. In a 2015 paper published in the Journal of Human Evolution, it was announced that the fossil was apparently a Neanderthal, and dating of the calcite has revealed that the bones are possibly older than 187,000 years old. How old is human civilization? Where do we come from? These questions persist, and as such, so do our endeavors of exposing the truth regarding the reality of these remarkable relics of a now forgotten history. Relics which we find highly compelling. In 1936, near Red Creek in London, Texas, something was found. It has become one of the most compelling pieces of evidence to suggest there is a lost history of Earth. Within a rock, Emma Han would notice a small piece of wood that appeared to be embedded. Finding this strange, she picks up the object for a closer inspection. Not really knowing what it was, it is lucky she was curious enough about the embedded wood to take it home. Nearly a decade later, presumably after the artifact had sat in Max and Helen Han's household for many years, their son Max would spark an interest into what it could be. He breaks the rock apart, and to their amazement concealed within the stone was an ancient stone hammer. Now known as the London Hammer, the rock that once grew around it was claimed to have stopped growing around 400 million years ago, which could only mean the hammer would be even older. What if the maker of this hammer nearly half a billion years ago stole the design from an ancient artifact he found himself? Just how old can our history be? The metal of the hammerhead has been confirmed to consist of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur. And since its discovery in the 1930s and its subsequent re-entry into the air, it has not rusted. Around 1983 the hammer was acquired by creationist Carly e. Barth, an active advocate of Paluxy River man tracks, and other alleged geologic anomalies, who began to call it the London Artifact. Many figures within the scientific and historical communities have strongly disagreed with the premise that the hammer be many hundreds of millions of years old, some even theorizing that the limestone in which it was discovered could have formed in just a few centuries in perfect conditions. The variation in dates put forward by creationist scientists regarding the matter has also just stoked the flames of debate, and indirectly aiding in the denial of the artifact being truly ancient. However, there are certain factors regarding this object, like so many others in this criteria, that cannot be explained by accepted academia. Firstly, it is unthinkable for the modern theory of evolution to include such artifacts, this gives the creationists a foothold, yet they lack the material to continue an argument back many millions of years. They are indeed opposite, yet both incorrect approaches. Thus, because of this, the most important features of the hammer are conveniently ignored frequently by both sides of the modern coin. For example, the handle of the hammer is not made of wood anymore, it is now made of coal. It was once made of wood, but through a natural and unrushed process, the wood has been transformed into coal. And whatever the reasons for these inconsistencies in reports, evidently the rock strata at the site are indeed Hensel Sand member of the Travis Formation, Lower Cretaceous, Upper Absham stage, considered to be approximately 110 to 115 million years old by conventional geologists. This is fact, so by default the hammer is older, regardless of ulterior motives for publicizing such artifacts, the truth they can tell, no matter how reluctant it may be to your worldview, shouldn't be ignored. However, the age of the rock formation may be relevant to authenticity, it is irrelevant to the fact that the hammer does indeed exist. And that these artifacts create a proposition for historical data we should be approaching with open minds, if we are to progress as a species. Mm -hmm.